This is Brianna Joy Gray, frequent guest on TMVS, Bernie Sanders National Press Secretary. I'd say, Bri, in this frame, and Bri is a very nice person, that, 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 that freeze is like about as irritated as I think you're going to have uh, Bri look, uh, and for all the reason in the world. This is from last night. This is before the latest absolute nonsense of Michigas from Tom Perez and the DNC. Um, but this is a really important point. Buttigieg declaring this victory is obnoxious. It's most. It's certainly wrong uh, if you're going by who got the most votes. Um, the institutional biases are working against Sanders. But even more important, I mean, look, and and maybe this is also something to be considered when you're you know having a tantrum about a, a funny tweet. When he declared victory, he really is quite literally erasing um, the the voices of of immigrants and other folks that are at the economic uh, edge who went out to fight for this election. So that is, in fact, you know, for all this terminology that gets thrown around in so many disingenuous and stupid and reductive ways, that's this is it here. I'm declaring a victory before the votes and civic actions of people have been registered is actually quite obscene. And I actually, you know, again, unfortunately, these terminology has been just so overused and so disingenuous to the point of irrelevance, but that is in fact erasure. This is Brianna well, Joy. I just want to say yeah. this clip includes at the top Buttigieg actually declaring victory. And, you know, I didn't, I seen it again. He is, well, we'll just play it. By all indications, we are going on to New Hampshire victorious. By all indications, no. Oh. Like, I can think of a few indications like the raw vote totals that you aren't the victor. By the only vindications that we actually should take seriously, he lost. And he's hinging it on basically a third process. Because the second realignment, all polls indicate, every report indicates Sanders won too. So he's basically saying all indications... On the technicality, without the full uh, voting of people from all different communities, most disproportionately workers and people of color, I'm making up that I want. And, th and this is what's getting rewarded across media. And then his, his like sly, you know, walk back is that I'm in victorious in the terms of like for our campaign. Yeah. Right. As Which, a small town mayor. Yeah. Like with two, two staffers at the beginning of my campaign. Sorry, but playing with that ambiguity is uh, that's classic uh, spy stuff. But. It is. By all indications, we are going on to New Hampshire victorious. How did the Sanders campaign view that statement on Monday night? Look, I think you have to respect the voters, every single voter that came out and tried to caucus, right? So, for example, we haven't seen any tallies from any of the satellite caucuses. And we know that satellite caucuses are caucuses which, in which immigrant populations, minority populations, first-time voters are overrepresented. Those are the groups that disproportionately vote for Bernie Sanders. And those are also the groups that really need to feel like there is a lot of faith and confidence in this process. We don't want the people who we've been talking to who we've been convincing that it matters to come out, right? We've had to have conversations with folks who don't normally see themselves represented and don't normally understand that their vote actually can yield a good result and a material result for their lives. Now they're being told that before their votes are even counted, that someone else is claiming victory, especially in light of the fact that Bernie Sanders still leads in the popular vote and, will, um, and we don't know what the actual outcome is going to be. It feels a little premature. Is it disappointing, though, that at this point, uh uh, it appears anyway, Pete Buttigieg has more state delegate equivalents. No, no, it's not. We won. And the only extent to which this is getting confused is because there has been either manipulation or just mass incompetence, which has produced those effects uh, for the for, you know, in a way that favors Pete Buttigieg. That's reality. It's getting worse, folks. Check out this. OK, new. Perez took the step of calling for a recanvas specifically because of issues around how the Iowa Democratic Party was allow was allocating state delegate equivalents from satellite caucus states. Two sources tell CNN. One source said the DNC wanted to go ahead of candidate of candidate recount calls. Uh, what does that sound like to you? 
It sounds like to me like they wanted to rush ahead and sign off on Buttigieg because with a Bernie's delegate lead win. before they counted the places that Bernie has been winning and all indications he will win. It's crooked. Guys, this I mean, look, yeah. I, look, I'm sorry. At a certain point, I don't I don't know. I, I, I got I'll be careful. I want to really honestly look like respect. You know, there, there's different platforms. There's different sensitivity around specific words. And that's actually really important. But at a certain point, like the pedantry just can't. I mean, they, because of the chaos produced by this app, which anybody could have seen. I, I was as soon as I found out about this, I texted. Uh, uh, I texted Mole. I said, "Are you worried about this?" And a lot of people, including you know, I won't, I won't go on record or whatever. But people that you absolutely respect and look to as, as, as you know. Credible people in this realm said, yeah, I am worried about that. Okay. They have an opportunity because of this chaos to play things out in a way that hurts Bernie Sanders. And that's, I'm sorry. That's what they're doing. I don't know how much I can bend over backwards here. If you don't see yeah. this move for what it is, and I, I got news for you. Great. They're pulling all this shit. Bernie won. He just raised $25 million. These are absolutely pathetic people who are completely unequipped to beat Donald Trump, by the way, and they're discrediting themselves. Fight, fight, fight. Yeah, until this quote, whatever this re-canvas process is finished and it, you know, verifies what we know about Bernie winning, uh, it's, I think, war with the Perez and the DNC. Like, this is absolutely unacceptable. And there's nobody should be giving anyone the benefit of the doubt right now. So, fine. Like, you, maybe this is all just incompetence. Fix it. Yeah, fix this it. This isn't look, about the people that are saying fix it. This is about the people who need to fix it. This is the people, and by the way, I'm seeing uh, Melissa uh, from Chicago. Tom Perez claims he will not stop the Iowa State Democratic Party from finishing reporting the results. Great. Not the point. What has he done by doing this? In fact, that's even, again, this is what's uncanny about these people, just even strategically. That's also the worst of both worlds. So he's stepping in. If he wanted to step in, he would have done it Tuesday night, okay? And he would have said, this is ridiculous. This is totally off. We're going to take over the process and we're going to have a re-canvas. Boom, that's it, done. He waits until exactly the moment that it's going to come through as a win for Sanders. And then... Okay, fine. Shut down the process. Be enormously sketchy. All right. But then he's saying the Iowa Democratic Party can release their numbers still, even as there's going to be a re-canvas. All that means is another several days of conflicting reports, confusion, and, and people in and power making up the rules. People in power making up the rules. And again, I will say Jim Messina tweeted out yesterday uh, you know, a Obama strategist who works for right wing parties like the Tories and everybody else abroad who has uh, his main clients are people like Uber and Airbnb. So obviously he's very fair to the uh, Sanders agenda. He's also one of these people, you know, uh, fuming, you know, fuming TV with Bernie can't win. He tweeted out essentially, maybe we should find this tweet. Yeah, you know, it's a mess. We should just move on. This is a cultivated mess. And I and look. Sure. They got to F up the news cycle. They got to give Bernie uh, Buttigieg an artificial boost. But the people should really recognize that Bernie won and there's huge momentum. And this is what the whole thing is going to look like. And this is another reason why you better win definitively. Yeah. This isn't some like, oh, and then, and then they'll, they'll move together and then everybody will come together as like a TV show. This is a battle. And if they're going to re-canvas and, you know, Bernie's going to win again, he might be the first, uh, you know, candidate to win the Iowa caucus and the first primary in the country on the same day. So that's exactly right. That's a turbo boost for his campaign. I mean, and, you know, obviously we're kind of playing with house money with all this because yes. the, the thing is, is Biden being fourth is just such a massive victory for Sanders. It is. But I mean, look, you know, it's it's a thing. I mean. Pete Buttigieg, and again, this is all on top of the fact, what's hysterical to me is, I'm sorry, can you tell me with a straight face that Pete Buttigieg is, is going to beat Donald Trump? I mean, that's the other thing that's amazing about this whole process is that it is an effort where clearly, and this is even just people going on TV and bad-mouthing Bernie, 
you are propping a candidate who nobody could possibly think is going to win. Nobody possibly thinks that a 37 year old college town mayor who is totally like for reasons that first of all, let's just lay it out for reasons that are absolutely wrong and need to be fought against and battled against, namely homophobia, like we saw in that horrifying clip at the caucuses. Right. So that's the part that we have to march with Buttigieg and any candidate who's running in a general who is a gay man or a lesbian woman or a transgender person, 100 percent. But just like with Obama, that's a hurdle that's going to need to be overcome. OK, so that's in the column of solidarity. We'll fight it. Then the other column is can't win statewide in Indiana. Totally unappealing outside of a PMC framework. Go and talk to somebody and see if they find Pete Buttigieg trustworthy. Has a biography which exemplifies every single thing that Donald Trump ran against. McKinsey, outsourcing, price fixing, and then has the affect of some type of stunted 20-year-old in a dorm room trying to impersonate Barack Obama. I, I, I mean, honestly, like that like that's the other part of this here. I, I don't pretend that Bernie is a slam dunk. And frankly, if I was just being a Machiavellian, as things are going now and Trump gets strengthened for re-election, I could totally see just like, you know what? I prefer Bernie. I prefer uh, Trump beat Buttigieg. But you know what? I actually care about the fate of this country and this planet. <laughs> and the only real off ramp from apocalypse we have is Sanders. So I'm going to do everything I can. But it, it really just should be underlined in the context of all of this. You can you can provide you can point to things that might be difficult for Sanders and some hypotheticals uh, that we haven't really dealt with yet. But Pete Buttigieg is like, like essentially John Kerry without a Vietnam record. I mean, I like how you could look yourself straight in the face and think that this candidate is going to win a Rust Belt yeah. coalition. You should not work in politics. That's like me. You know, I, 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 I honestly, I can't even think of like a sports analogy because nobody could say anything that crazy in sports. Couldn't. I hope uh, Amy Klobuchar brings back her story about how he can't win a statewide race on Friday at the debate. Like, bring that back up. Yo, it, it is it is to a awe Tea Party that lost to a centrist Democrat. Awe inspiring that uh, I'll shut up in a second. If this is really the play, and you're going on a fantasy about the Midwest that is totally disconnected from material reality, and you have no problem nominating a candidate who has a overtly racist law and order record. Uh, so those are pretty big stipulations. It is insane that the, like Amy Klobuchar will lose to Trump, I think, almost certainly. And Pete Buttigieg, I would bet every single material possession I have would lose to Donald Trump. So the fact that that mindset isn't even going to Klobuchar versus Buttigieg is mind blowing. There is a universe I can conceive of Amy Klobuchar beating Trump. It's a it's an infinitesimal one. There's none I could picture Buttigieg beating Trump in. I, I, I just, it's un, I, un, unbelievable. So for anybody that wants to beat Trump, uh, the job right now in this moment is to make sure that this is uh, Pete's Waterloo. Uh, he, we need to knock him out of here. Uh, and, you know, it's the scrutiny thing, right? Like, if he's going to declare this victory, then maybe it should be time that people start paying attention to really the, <laughs> the depth of problems this guy has and uh you know let's get him let's look mayor of a town of ten thousand people whose main accomplishments were bulldozing poor people's homes who has a racism riddled police department now obviously racism in police departments is a national local problem uh, across the board but so including certainly in say amherst massachusetts without a doubt that being said, Amherst, Massachusetts does not have in a town of actually larger, I think, than South Bend, does not have stories that sound like something out of L.A. or New York. Like that, that should really say something. You're running a coffee shop town. And these stories are not, again, the systemic racism that you would hear anywhere. 
that needs to be fought root and branch. And obviously we don't trust Pete to do it, but you're talking about people being murdered. You're talking about somebody, you know, or, or being killed in questionable circumstances to, to you know, whatever, uh, at least one person, teenager. And you're talking about with and a mother who hasn't gotten the answers she wants. You're talking about a black police chief fired because apparently a bunch of fucking white people don't want to work for him under him. And Pete having their back, not his back. And the whole other set of questions about how does that relate to who donated to his campaigns? And that's his political record besides losing state ride runs. And then everything else he's done in life has been being in the most narrowly selected incestuous rooms imaginable. Harvard, Oxford, and McKinsey. And uh, just to button this, Sanders just spoke uh, a minute ago, asked about the recanvass, re and he said, we won an eight-person election by some 6,000 votes, and that's not going to change with recanvassing. That's the message. That's the message. Bernie won Iowa. Bernie won Iowa. And you know what? They would not do this to any other candidate. Sorry. Full stop. Full stop. They would not. And I mean that like in a very specific sense, because they might, because because the the narrative would be if if Pete Buttigieg was ahead by six thousand votes and this satellite thing was still happening, it would be a handful of Twitter accounts, probably not even the Sanders campaign itself, going. We need to know what happened with the proportional delegates, and the whole media would go, "Well, there's still a little bit of a count going on, but the real story here is that Pete Buttigieg crushed it." And by the way, that would be the real story, yeah. incidentally. That's where I got to be really blunt with you. I wouldn't be one of those people. I would say, Jesus Christ, that's a disaster on to New Hampshire. Because we would actually be intellectually honest about that. So the bottom line is that Bernie Sanders won Iowa by 6,000 votes. And all of this from the media and the DNC is bullshit to obscure that. Period. That's it.